Hello and welcome to chapter 3 research methodology part 2. In this lesson I will discuss about the most important issues in chapter 3 which are population and sampling, sample design processes. Under sample design process we will see how we determine the sample size with different conditions and how we select the sampling methods. We will see different sampling methods and we will also see how we determine, how we select the sampling methods. Thus, stay with me up to the end of my discussion. And if you are new for my channel, please subscribe and hit the notification button to get my updates. Thank you. Let's get started. First of all, the population in a research refers to the entire group of individuals or elements that the researcher is interested in studying. Or it is a complete group of individuals or elements that the data is taken from. This group, which means the population, shares a common characteristic. For example, if we want to conduct a study to assess the service quality of a university, all students enrolled in that particular university become our population. So this population, the student's population shares some common characteristics because they are learning together. They are getting the service from that same particular university, same university. And the other example is if we want to know the employee satisfaction in a specific company, so all the employees working in that specific company become our population, and all those employees share, all those employees share some common characteristics because they are working in that particular company. In general, understanding the nature of the population. Understanding the nature of the population is very essential or very crucial to decide to make major decisions like sampling method, selecting the suitable sampling method so as to get so as to get the minimized bias, so as to minimize the bias and so as to increase the representativeness. We have to choose a suitable sampling method. To choose suitable sampling method, we have to understand the nature of the population. Even understanding the nature of the population make us to properly decide either to use census, that means considering the entire group of individuals or elements for our examination, or to take sample, some portions of some portions of the population for our analysis. By the way, conducting census or studying or considering the entire population is often impractical because, because of the following reasons. One is the time constraint. The other is the cost constraint because it requires large amount of costs. And in general, because of the resource constraints, it is not easy to perform or it is not easy to consider the entire population for our examination. Due to that reason, sampling is the best option. Sampling is the best option because sampling involves only a subset of individuals or elements from the population, but they represent the entire group that the data is drawn from, that the sample is drawn from. In general, the goal of sampling is to obtain a representative subset that reflects the characteristics of what? The population. Even though they are the subset of the entire group, so they represent, they represent and they reflect the characteristics of that population. Here is the main objective of taking a sample. Taking a sample requires less time, less cost in general, less resources, but they can represent, they can represent the characteristics of the population. Even though sampling has its own merits like being cost effective, time efficient, feasibility, and generalizability, there are some demerits still exists, like sampling bias limited generalizability, margin of error, resource constraints, 
ethical consideration, particularly when the sample size is very large, so it may require large amount of resources. In general, if you want to know more about sampling, you can go to lesson 7 and I will put the link in the description box below. Let's move to sample design process. So the first step in sample design process is defining the target population. Defining the target population means clearly describe the population from which the sample will be taken, from which the sample will be drawn from. When we are defining the target population, so we have to consider several factors like research objectives. We have to know the nature of the research objectives, the accessibility of the data, and the resources that we have. So we have to consider such factors to define the target population. After defining the target population, we have to, the next step is we have to choose the sampling frame. Ideally, or in principle, the sampling frame is the same with that of the target population. But in practice, in practice, the sampling frame is the available list of the target population used in sampling or the working definition of the target population. Because, because if we consider, for example, if we consider the registered students, the registered students are the population, so the updated list of the registered students, that means after avoiding or after removing the missed ones and after removing the duplications, so we get the sampling frame. That is the updated or the available list of the target population, which is used in sampling. And after choosing the sampling frame, the next step is selecting the suitable sampling method based on different factors. For example, the research objectives or the nature of the population, we have to choose, we have to choose the suitable sampling methods so that or to get a good finding or to be reliable we have to choose a suitable sampling method either non-probability sampling or probability sampling by the way these are the two major division and under these two divisions there are subdivision methods of sampling so after choosing after choosing the sampling method, the next step is determining the sample size. Even when we determine the sample size, so we have to consider factors. We have to consider factors like the variability of the population, the required precision or the margin of error, and so on. And the last step is implementing the sampling plan. Anyway, if you want to know more about the sample design process, so you can go to lesson 8 and I will put the link in the description box below. Let's see the overview of sampling methods. Sampling method is subdivided into probability sampling and non-probability sampling. In the probability sampling, the selection is based on the principle of randomization, that is random selection or chance selection or probability selection then it is more complex more time consuming and usually more costly than non-probability sampling because in the case of non-probability sampling it is a method of selecting units from the population using a subjective or using non-random technique or non-random method non-probability sampling does not require a complete survey frame. As a result, it is fast, easy, and inexpensive way of obtaining or way of collecting data. And again, probability sampling is subdivided into four categories, that is simple random sampling, stratified random, stratified sampling, cluster sampling, systematic sampling. And again, the probability sampling is subdivided into component sampling, quota sampling, snowboard sampling and judgmental sampling. If you want to know more about the probability sampling, you can go to lesson 9. And if you want to know about non-probability sampling, so you can go to lesson 10 and I will put the link in the description box below. Let us see how we determine the sample size. 
determining the appropriate sample size is crucial for the reliability and the validity of the research findings. Being reliable and valid is very important for a research. So we have to consider the following factors in determining the sample size. The first one is the population size. It's obvious that the total number of individuals in the population, if the higher the population, the higher the sample size will be. And the other is the margin of error or the confidence interval, the range within which the true population parameter is expected to lie. This is also another factor that affects the sample size. And the other is confidence level, the probability that the margin of error contains the true population parameter. And the common confidence levels are 90%, 95%, and 99%. So the higher the confidence level, the higher the sample size will be. And the variability or the standard deviation of the population, the degree of variation in the population. So if there is higher degree of variation in the population, we require higher sample size. If the, the population is homogeneous, we require, or if there is less variability, we require less sample size. Anyway, if you want to know more about how to determine the sample size using examples, so you can go to lesson 11 and I will put the link in the description box below. Let's now see the two most important formula in determining the sample size. The first one is the Cochrane formula. The Cochrane formula is suitable or used in the case when we do have infinite population. When we do have unknown population or undetermined population, if the population is unknown, for example, if we consider the, a television program and if we take the population or the viewers so we cannot know exactly how much of the population uh, watches that television program. So in that case, it is infinite population and we can use the Cochrane formula to determine the sample size. The Cochrane formula, the sample size is Z squared times P times Q over E squared and N is a sample size and Z is a value found in the Z table at a given confidence level and P is estimated proportion of an attribute that is uh, present in the population and Q equals 1 minus P and E is the margin of error or the desired level of precision. And in the case of finite population, we can use the Yamana formula in the determined population or in the known population when the population is known. So we can use the Yamana formula N equals capital N that is the population divided by 1 plus the capital N the population times E square. So in this case, the population is known. And if you want to know about, if you want to know more about sample size determination with examples, so you can go to lesson 11 and I will put the link in the description box. And the last step of the sample design process is implement the sampling plan, which means using the chosen sampling method to select the sample from the sampling frame or applying the sampling method or using or applying the sampling method to select the sample from the sampling frame. Now it is time to give you a practical example. So for this practical example, a title is Academic Performance of Students in a College of Business Administration. So as you see, you can write the, your thesis, you can write the subtopic of your thesis, like the population in sample design, population of the study, sample size determination, sampling methods. So because, because of this title, so this section discusses the research population consideration of determined sample size and the sampling techniques to be used. So the population of the study is, the population of the study is all the enrolled students of College of Business Administration at ABC University during this period from 2023 up to the 2024 academic year, totaling approximately 2,500 students. This population spans various disciplines such as marketing, finance, human resource management, and international business, providing a comprehensive representative of the broader student body in business education. Sampling frame was derived from the university registrar updated list of students for specific academic year. For that specific academic year, so, so the sampling frame is just the updated, the updated or the cleared list of students which is used for sampling, which is used for our, our sampling process. So the sample size can be determined using the Yamana formula because the population is already known. 
since the population is 2,500, which is a large amount of large members, so because of the uh, cost, because of large amount, it requires large amount of costs, because of it requires large amount of time to uh, conduct census. So we can use sampling and we can use the Yeman formula because the population is already known with a finite population that is 2,500 and 95% of confidence and 5% of margin of error. The researcher employed the statistical formula developed by Yeman. So we can get the sample size 345. We can get sample size. So the sampling method is a researcher used probability sampling method, which is considered to be the most rigorous and reduces bias because of randomization principle. It reduces bias. It increases the representativeness of the population and making it advantage for generalizing to the population. Specifically, a stratified random sampling technique was used. We used the stratified random sampling because of because the students are grouped according to their departments, departments, market, finance, human resource, management, and international business. So stratified random sampling technique was used to avoid sampling bias and achieve a more representative sample from each group or from each department, we can say. The population was divided into four strata based on the students' departments and the sample size was proportionally allocated across these groups. So we have to know one more data we require is that we have to know the number of students for each department. We have to know uh, how many of the students, how many of the students from 2,500 is marketing, how many is finance, how many is uh, human resource management, and how many is international uh, business. So based on that proportion, we can allocate this 345 into that proportion of uh, that four groups. This is what we call the stratified random sampling techniques. This is the end of our discussion for today and thank you for listening. Just to remind, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and be my family. If you like this particular video, give me thumbs up and share to your friends. If you have any comment, please write on the comment box. Thank you.